Hey everyone, Kyle once again. And welcome back to another movie review. And um, this time I'm um, going to be, um, see that I'm going to be uh, finishing off of the Die Hard franchise. Since uh, a while back I started reviewing the first film because during the time of the, the Christmas month. So because I, I reviewed it because people consider that film a Christmas movie. Which they really do sometimes. So. so I reviewed that film and I said I'll get to the sequel some other time though. So... So now I'm just gonna be now I'm just gonna finish off the franchise. So we're we'll reviewing by reviewing the sequels now. Now the first one, that's of course, I'm gonna review is the very fun sequel that I really do enjoy is Die Hard Two, which I never understood, which I never cared for the we'll blow it um, Die Harder. I just just for Die Hard Two, but um anyway, and so Die Hard Two released in. Uh, 19, the summer of 1990, and once again, um, just directed another, another, another film that's, uh, directed by Rennie Harlan. Rennie Harlan, he just directed, who directed Deep Blue Sea, which I just, I reviewed not that long ago. Check that out. <laughs> Rennie Harlan, I enjoy as a director. Especially with this film, Deep Blue Sea, um, Cliffhanger, and then he also did, of course, like I said, he did... Uh, Nightmare on Elm Street Part Four, the another another Dream Wars. That was Part Three, the Dream Master, and he directed. Like I said he directed the Adventures of Ford Fairling, uh, Prison, and well, and also that um, he, of course, like I said, at least before he had he has some he has some missteps like twelve rounds, John Cena that sucked. And Co Covenant, which that was like eh, as fast as it's just a forgettable film, and then the Legend of Hercul the Legend of Hercules from twenty fourteen. But um, and he also I said that Ex Exorcist at the beginning I think was pretty was, well was pretty decent. So, but other than that though, I enjoy Brandy Harlan as a director. He he deserves another chance at directing a good film like this or Deep Blue Sea or Cliffhanger. But I really love this. I love the sequel, which I also have right here. I have um, Die Hard with a Vengeance. Now, for the first film is always the best for a lot of people, and especially to me, the first film is always the best in the series. And as for se as for sequels go, what uh, sequels do I like the most? Well, in order, per perhaps. Well, I know a good a Good Day to Die Hard. That's definitely the le forever for. Our Lot for like most people, it's the least favorite. That's understandable. But um, if I were to put, I would just put it as it goes. I these two, I, I like just as I like very equally. But I picked Die Hard Two as my favorite sequel because I've seen this I've seen the sequel way more times than I saw with Die Hard of Vengeance. I love a lot of things in Die Hard in Die Hard, of, Die Hard with a Vengeance, but as so I want to pick for sequel as my as my favorite sequel in the franchise, I pick Die Hard Two because I like I said I've seen this I've seen this more times uh, than Die Hard with a Vengeance a lot more before I saw Die Hard with a Vengeance, so yeah. But I love Die Hard with a Vengeance regardless, though. But it's just that I saw this more times than the third film, so that's why I'm picking this one as my favorite sequel. So it would be, yeah, it'll, it'll just go as go as as the sequels go. My favorite is the first Die Hard, and then favorite, and the favorite sequel is Die Hard 2, then Die Hard 3, and then the fourth one. And of course, the least favorite is the fifth one. But, but still. But I'll get to Die Hard with a Vengeance in the next review. But as I'm saying, I, I I love this sequel. Um, it's a really good, really fun, solid action film. Bruce Willis once again, fantastic as John McClane, and came out in the summer of 1990. Did uh, very well at the box office. It made more than the first film. As a 69% of Rotten Tomatoes, which is a lot lower than the first film though, but still it's passable. I would give it a lot more higher, probably in a percent at least to me. At least it has a 7.1 IMDb, which is reasonable enough. I gave it like a 7.5. And 
And this is a, I like like the first one has a two is a two like even the third one has a, is a two disc edition. The first one has like a commentary with director Rennie Harlan, and the second this two has Die Die Harder making of Die Hard Two documentary making of featurette, film's profile, four deleted scenes, interview with Rennie Harlan, behind the scenes, visual effects breakdown, storyboard sequence. But yeah, but Die Hard Two. Just a um, very fun film. Um, besides Bruce Willis, uh, Bonnie Medelia, who, who plays Holly Gennaro, his wife, comes back. Um, William, William Atherton, who was um, uh, Dick from the first film, The Reporter, which uh, Holly punched at the end of the film. Um, Regerville, Regerville Bell Johnson, he uh, one comes back as uh, Sergeant Powell, He's only in just for a little bit, though. But still, it, when he's in the film, he still does good still. Um, and uh, bad, a fun, fun bad guy played by William Sadler, which he was um, the corrupted senator bad guy in Steven Seagal's um, Hard to Kill. He was also in roles like The Green Mile, um, The Mist. In, he, also played the, he also played the president in Iron Man 3. But I but but, but if you recognize Adam Adam oh, Adam Sadler I was getting confused William Sadler he, um you you would recognize him he's been in other films like I think he played a great bad guy in this film just the his presence like his the stone cold look on his face especially you know his just the stone cold look on his face you can tell he's a very uh, a villain that you want to hate because he's so cold hearted basically because he takes nothing from from anybody he's just uh, his name is Colonel Stewart. He's like he's a guy who was kicked kicked out of the army. But um, he's just a very he's a he's a he's a fun bad guy. Um, John Amos as this army guy named Major Grant, which um, John Amos he was from he was an Eddie Murphy comedy coming to America. Um, he was also what I remember long ago. He was on the show Roots. He was the he played the older Kunta Kente. He was the older of that guy. But he's been in a lot of films. I recognize John Amos. Um, well, it's well directed by Rennie Harlan. I enjoy Rennie Harlan. And it's... A ver and it's the pacing, I will say, is pretty decent. That's all I'll give it that. It's an over... I don't get the times for this. It's an, it's an over two-hour film, but I think it's well-paced. I don't think it's not that... It's not fa It's not as well as fast paced as the first film was, but still decent paced. Um, but as a, and it's also based on a novel named Fifty Eight Minutes, though, which there's like in, in, uh, a little bit as in there, but I never read the novel, so I wouldn't know. Um, score score by Michael Kamen. Wait, Michael Kamen. That is. Yeah, I think they, I think they, Michael came. I think he did the score for Deep Blue Sea. I think why did I reviewed? Yeah. Okay. No. I thought that name, that name was familiar. I thought he did he, 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 he did a score to the film I that I just reviewed. Well, he did if it does a different Die Hard, The Dead Zone. Lethal Weapon 2 and 3. The Last Boy Scout. Last Action Hero. Oh, Eva, Event Horizon, that's what it was. The score, for, the score for Event Horizon. I thought it was... I just reviewed that, so... Yeah, I thought that the name was familiar when I said Mark Heyman. But yeah. And so that, as the story goes, um, uh, John McClane, he... He's in Washington. He's in Washington D.C. airport, waiting for his wife's plane to land, and as he's waiting, he gets a little bit suspicious. Uh, some couple of guys they go into the back room where the lug where the luggage area is, and and well, <laughs> well also before before the whole fight scene, before the first uh, shootout scene, we're introduced with uh, William Sadler's uh, char uh, char character, Colonel Stewart. And I even said that um, there's an interview with with, with uh, Rennie Harlan. He said that um, how uh, 
his idea was to, for Colonel Stewart, is that, um, be introduced but naked. That would be, like, an effective and usual way to introduce a character. That's what he said. I understand that he's supposed to be, like, this intimidating bag of butt. Seeing him butt naked, I think... I think it's, I think it's, I think it's more, it's more of a laughable idea than effective, I would say. I mean, he's just, he's just in his, this hotel room, he's butt naked, and he's just practicing his martial arts, and... And the way he takes a remote to turn off the TV, just like this. Yeah. But I didn't need to see him. I didn't need to see him. If he wasn't his boxers or briefs, that's fine. But just not butt naked, but still. But, um, then they all, they all go, they all get to the airport. Then, um, as John McClane, he's waiting. He sees, like, the two guys. They go in the luggage area. And you get the first shootout, which is a good first shootout. And this, he gets, he kills this one guy. Um, this... He's on the he's on the he's on he's on the where the you know where the all the luggage goes on. He gets like his head kind of crushed on this thing, while the other guy he gets away, and where the bad guys um, are holed up at the, are at they're at this church. Um. And uh, John McClane he he sees all these the, the, the they don't even seal this whole area off. They don't, it's like he said, what are you doing? It's a crime scene. You're supposed to seal this area off. So he goes to, he takes to the. The captain of the security of the airport, um, Captain Lorenzo, played by Dennis uh, Franz. Yeah, Dennis Dennis Franz. He was in the show, I think, NYPD Blue. And he's been a couple other stuff, though. But I think the, the last one before he like retired was in the film with Nicolas Cage and Meg Ryan, like the City of Angels. But um, he, he's, he, he's like this arrogant... Um, douchebag, uh, 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 chief, uh, chief of police of the airport, and, and he's, he's getting arguments with Bruce Willis, and just when he's, when he's being kicked, when, he, when he's being kicked out of his, um, as, out of his office, and Bruce Willis has a funny line, goes, what's this, what's this, what's this up the, um, metal detectors first, the lay in your ass, or the shit in your brains, fat fuck. <laughs> Uh, the Bruce Willis has a lot of good has a lot of good lines in this film as well. That's a funny line right there. So he goes and like takes the fingerprints from the dead corpse, and he calls um, Reginald Vell Johnson up. It was it was nice to see him come back as uh, Sergeant uh, Powell, and you know he just you know the Sergeant Powell he like laughs and like hey John how are you doing? So he since he's he's even, he's even he's still eating Twinkies like it was like the first one was getting Twinkies he's still eating Twinkies. <laughs> so he sends him the fingerprints. Um. Then he, he gives he gives back to him saying that this guy that, that, that was the, about the corpse he's like well he's dead you need a you need a computer to figure that out no no you don't follow me according to this the Department of Defense has been dead for two years. Sergeant Oswald Cochran, uh, American advisor in Honduras, killed in a helicopter accident, uh, 51188. Rain between the lines sounds like a lot of black bag stuff to, black bag stuff to me. And that was, that was a zip for Reginald Bell Johnson, you know, says goodbye to him. Which, yeah, like I said, even though he is much, much smaller than the first one, it was still nice to see Reginald Bell Johnson in it, because I, I like Reginald Bell Johnson, he's a good actor. Um... So he goes up to the to the control tower where the airport is, and uh, Dennis Franz is talking with um, the guy who was like in charge of the, the tower, played by Fred Dolan Thompson, who's now passed, who's now passed on, sadly. Fred Dolan Thompson, he was in. I mostly remember from Baby's Day Out, but he's been in a lot of films. But I mostly remember growing up as from Baby's Day Out. He was that cop. But Fred Fred Dolan Thompson, may he rest in peace. He did good in this film as well, and he also had this um. Another guy named by the name of Barnes, played by um, Art Evans. He's like the chief, the, the the chief engineer of the place, of the tower. And, he, and Art Evans, he was also he had a little role in Fright Night. He was the the cop like when um, Charlie approaches um, Chris Sarandon and said he was a vampire. The cop didn't believe him. That's Art Evans right there. So he had a little small role in that in Fright Night. So he, 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 um, McLean shows him that paper about that dead guy. Donald Thompson says, okay, we have a body in the morgue that seemed to have died twice. So McLean, uh, knows something's about, something's about to go down. Um, 
And uh, back, comes back with the bad guys as they're setting up their equipment. And you actually see one of the guys, one of the bad guys, is actually a John Leguizamo. He's only in just for like two scenes in the film. You see him outside doing something. And he only, he only says one line and it, it, it's been dubbed. You can clearly tell his, his voice has been dubbed. He says, all this, all this is a tap kernel. Clearly that's not his voice. Because looking at the, reading out that D, John Leguizamo like, he's supposed to have a much larger role, but it's, but it's been cut down. They say he's like he was too short. I don't know what his side has to do with cutting his role much smaller, and he only come to one line. That even that's not his voice; it's been dubbed. So I'm not sure why, because of his side, because it has had to do with anything. But yeah, you recognize him for one part, and um, later on in the film, you see him again. But he's like, hey, that's John Leguizamo. Um. So the, the 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 lights in the roadways they cut off, and then Earth, all the systems have been shut down. And then William Sadler he calls on them on their speakers, tells them that there's this plane that is carrying a um, it's a military plane that's coming that's coming in. It's carrying a this uh, drug this big drug dealer named by the name of General Esperanza. So he, he, he tells them the, dem the demands, he wants another plane fully fueled, and any attempt to restore your systems will be met by severe penalties. So, and then Bruce Willis gets, his, um, gets, gets kicked out of the place, get, get, gets kicked out of the place, and there's his reporter too with him. And as they're in the elevator, he gets up, uh, up the elevator, and he goes to these, all these, all these um, to another place where like, it's like, like the boiler room, but it's not. He's like, he's like, how can the same shit happen to the same guy twice? Can to the, to the first film, the first the previous film, which I which I, I like that line too. And he meets with this a uh, janitor by the name of um, Marv, played by Tom Bauer, which I remember him. He was in the Hills of Ice remake. He was that gas station guy that just been talking with the cannibals before he committed suicide in the film. So he uh, asked for for the plant for the plants to work. They're going go because um, Art Evans they, they he has an idea to restore the systems with this um the it's called the antenna array, and it takes like a SWAT team with him. And as they get to this, as they get to the new term the terminal. Some bad guys are waiting there to ambush them, and one of the bad guys, um, the first bad guy you see, is actually Robert Patrick. Which this was the year 1990, and this is the year this is the year before he made it big as playing the T1000 and Terminator 2, because Terminator 2 was 1991. This is 19. This was 1990. So this is the, this is this is the role he did before he got his big break. I wonder if James Cameron liked his little role in this. Maybe that's why they, they asked him. So they said they wanted a, a, a Terminator to be like small and skinny, like not body built like Arnold. But somehow, like it had to, James Cameron had to see something like with Robert Patrick in this film in order to get him in the role for Terminator Two. But yeah, and then one of the SWAT team guys says, "Hey asshole, what do I look to look like to you?" And then Robert Patrick's like, "A sitting duck." That's the way he says it. It's that the intimidating voice that he had when he says that. I like that. He's like a sitting duck. Shoots the guy point blank range, and he get this and he get this fun shootout. Um, they take out all. They take out all the SWAT team. One even one of the bad guys gets killed, but um, all the SWAT team gets shot. Um, and to and I think that's pretty much. My, and I think that's my favorite. My favorite action scene in the movie. Is this is this first? Um, well, not the first. The second shoot. The first second action scene. I would pretty much say it's my it's my favorite uh, scene in the film. But I'm sure that a lot of people like the scenes the scenes later on though. But still, I I love the action sequences in, in this film. But if I pick one, the one I remember the most uh, while watching this film a lot is the, sh the is the that shoot up this this shoot up scene right here. So. Um, Robert Patrick is about to shoot Art Evans, but then uh, McLean he's in the tunnels. Is even before he gets in the tunnels, like he gets in, the, he's as again the dog's like, why can't just have a normal Christmas, like a little um, eggnog, Christmas tree, some turkey, 
But no, I had to crawl out on this fucking tin can. So he, he kicks he kicks like this um the thing that goes to the bench, he kicks like this grit down on Robert Patrick and shoots him. A good really good uh blood squid, which is which I appreciate. And it's funny that yeah, McLean shoots the early T one thousand dead. <laughs> so yeah, that was funny, yeah. McLean shoots early T one thousand. So he shoots Robert, Robert Patrick and um um, fun, well, more fun actions where he, you know, he's, he's doing a, he's doing a somersault and he's rolling over, shooting at another guy, and, and then where this one guy is on this, um, what are those the things are called? It's where you know when, you know what you're painting, you have to, um, you're on this thing, and I figure what that thing is called. It's not a shelf or anything. It's something I forget. And McLean, he pushes it over, and that was another like, good, good kill. As the guy falls. And then the whole thing just goes and falls right on top of the guy, like, no! That was that was a cool death right there. And then the other guy, he runs out of he runs out of, runs out of, um out of bullets. He says, "I'm gonna kick your fucking ass." And then Bruce Willis, he kicks them, he pushes the button for that um, throw that thing. I forget what that thing is called again. Because his gun is over there, he, he drops his gun, and he pushes it to get it, and the guy starts running towards him, and then grabs him. So, shoots that guy, and then the antenna ray explodes, saying it was bait, you know, make him waste her time. So, uh, William Sadler, he calls him up again, says that, um, he says, you're, uh, you're going to pay the penalty now. And then uh, McLean is talking to him. He's like, oh, McLean, John McLean, the policeman hero who saved the Nakatomi hostages. I read about you in People magazine. You seem a little out of your league on Nightline. Bruce Willis goes, hey, Colonel, blow me. Um, but then he, uh, uh, Colonel Stewart, he because he's gonna pay the, he's gonna pay, let them pay the penalty. He's gonna take one of the airplanes, which since he's talking on their own system, they have control of what to say on the. Um, on the airplanes, like he makes this one airplane, um, like go like way below ground ground uh, measure. It's like measuring uh, the ground floor, but making it go much more lower, so they're flying right into the concrete. And they talk one to um, the plane that he's going to crash. The pilot of that plane is actually played by Cole Meany. Cole Meany, who's um, in Con Air and other films, and especially his supporting role as, um, Miles in Star Trek Next Generation. Yeah, Cole Meany, as, he was that, he was that arrogant FBI agent in Con Air. You know, when is this over? So are you, you little prick. Yeah, he plays as, um, the, the pilot of this planet they're gonna crash. So, they, they, and, uh, Bruce Willis, he tries to, like, make these flare, try to signal them, but couldn't see them, and he's only pull it up, and then crashes, good explosion, good effects of the plane exploding, and I also think that, um, uh, on the feature, making of the featurette, that William Sadler explained that his favorite part of the film was pretending to be the Dell's control tower talking to the plane, crashing it, and you see, like, just, like, how cold-hearted this guy is, you see that stone-cold look on his face, especially his eyes, he's that, that frozen, we got gotcha. you. So, yeah, just a a bad villain you want to hate. So, as they're cleaning up the mess, they call in some for some help. There's this uh, there's this um, army platoon, platoon, um, the ma major Graham played by John Amos. Um, and also it, 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 every now and then it, every now and then again it cuts to um, Bonnie Bedelia Holly up in the plane that's that's been circling you know, until they get, until they're low on fuel William Atherton, um as um Richard or Dick was his name um he's he's in there as well and he's and the guy the guy's just like an once again he's being it's like an arrogant prick because. He's getting suspicious of why all the planes are still doing up in the air, and he has his buddy to help him. There's a signal down below of the, the um, the tower down below, which I'll get to in, after that. But so it cuts to them now again, but 
I mean, it's, it's fine because yeah, Bonnie and Dylan was good. Once again, good as um, as uh, Holly, William Atherton, as um, Richard Dick. <laughs> he, he's another guy. You also you think he's just, just dumb and stupid, but he still played a good job at it. Um, but I, I think it's fine. I, it didn't bother. It didn't bother me just because it cuts between because you know wondering what's going on up in the planes. So it didn't bother me that much. But um. <laughs> Um, and it's the, uh, where the, the military plane where the General Esperanza is, kills, he kills the people on the plane, and he's making the emergency landing, and Bruce Willis, he talks with, um, the janitor, Marv again, where the plane is gonna be at, on the runway, so he gets up on that ladder, you know, he's caught on the grid where the plane is coming, he gets out of the way at the last second, and he stops the plane, and the General is go, you know, he's about to open the door and says, freedom, and McClane goes and punches him in the face and says, not yet. Supposed to, supposed to stay in your seat until the plane reaches the terminal. No frequent flyer, frequent flyers for you. Who are you? A cop. A cop. Yeah, I'm one of the bad guys. And you're you're one of the bad guys. And uh, one of the one of the good guys. And you're one of the bad guys. Now I'm like, gosh, I'm sorry. I'm going to trade it for my wife. And the bad guys, they come and she shoots one guy and then shoots the guy in the arm. And he gets in the, he gets in the cockpit and. They throw all these they throw all, all these grenades at him, and Miller got another good um another, another really good scene where he gets in this ejector seat, ejects out as the plane explodes. And really good, where it's upper it's the overhead shot of the plane exploding. And McClane's in the sheet sheet seat the ejector seat, and he's screaming, Aah! and he and he goes off to the side over here saying, "Oh shit." I, I I love that scene right there though. This is like his look on his face. He goes, "Oh shit!" <laughs> so that's that's another good, another good explosion. Good scene as well. Um. So, and he's, he needs to put, he needs to explain what what happens now, and and then John Amos he's getting a little irritated because he's keeping on a, you no. Know, well, he's doing what he's doing. He's he's trying to save the day, and he's like, um, John Amos is telling him. Well, you're the you're you're the wrong guy in the wrong place at the wrong time, and he so goes, "Story of my life," which is another thing that what in "Live for Your Die Hard" is what the bad guy tells him the same thing in that film. What he says, you know, in the wrong bad, wrong place at the wrong time, yeah. So um, Art Evans tells him that because um, the bad guys were they arrived there quickly, they were close by. So he goes with McLean searching the houses, and they find the church. And McLean, he he was trying to sneak over there, but when um, Holly called him on his beeper, one bad guy jumps on him, and then Art, Art Evans is telling everyone to come over here. And McLean, he kills this one bad guy, he kisses an ice, uh, one, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's on the ground, he has a knife to him, and he grabs an icicle and shows up right in the guy's eye. And I think that the, and I think this was supposed to be much more violent. I think they wanted to make it like an NC-17 rain, but they cut some stuff down. I'd like to see more of the violence into this, because... Yeah, he just goes and takes a, um, an icicle and just jams it right into the guy's eye. That's a, that's, another, that's another cool death right there. And and I like and I like when he looks at the guy and goes like this. Oh, you know, he didn't want to, he didn't want to look at that. And and then and then John Amos, you know, he's being you know now being like nice. And he's like, Gee, McLean, are you all right? You want a medic?" And then Captain Lorenzo, he's giving more McLean. He's been nothing. He's been other than been giving but McLean shit the whole time through this album, through this whole movie, and he's like, McLean, what do you think you're doing? Playing John Wayne? I would like to spend the rest of the night in the cell. And it, like, of course, with John Wayne, that's only for, that's only for the first film, with um, you know, with Hans saying a mention about John Wayne at the end of the movie. Yeah, so you got a mention of John Wayne, and then um, John Wayne was like, like being on McLean, so I was like, Lorenzo, shut the fuck up and go do something useful. Go seal up the streets. Like, hey, you can't talk to me like that. Oh no, Lorenzo. Sergeant, get this bureaucrat or Mr. Out, out of Mr. McLean's face. And then he's like, McLean's like, I guess I was wrong about you. You're not such an asshole after all. No, you were right. I'm just your kind of asshole. And then, and then uh, they get this shootout, which, um, well, I'm gonna say because everyone's seen the film before, and as a uh, which might well see everyone's seen the film before is that um, um. You find out that you think that John Johnny was was good at playing at play, like, being a good guy though, but it turns out he's a bad guy. He's working with um, Colonel Stewart William Sadler, because 
as they're shooting out, they're shooting nothing but blanks. You can tell because they have these uh, cl the magazine clips for the guns with blue tape around them. I mean, it has blanks, but with, with its red tape, it has real bullets. You know, you find out that they have been switching their magazine clips with the blue tape with the blanks as they're creating a, as a, a fake shootout. As the, as the bad guys in the church are getting ready to shoot, you see John Languizamo right there. He's just, like, walking with a gun. And then they get on these uh, snow skis. Or, yes, these, these uh, snow skis. McLean shoots two more guys. And he gets on the snow ski, chases after them. And one guy is about to shoot him. And he has one of those guns, which he didn't know whether they had blanks. And he gets warning, I had the bastard in my sights. I know I did. And they... And the, his uh, snow skier explodes. And he, he puts two and two together. That's the whole thing is a setup. And it shows that John Amos he uh, kills one of his uh, one of the guys because he said the guy said that he was transferred to the Grant to Grant's team because the other guy he said he got appendicitis. So he didn't know nothing about it. So John Amos he goes and slits the guy's throat, which is a very good uh, throat slit. You see, it's all bloody. Like, oh. That's that's a that's a, that's a like, good gruesome throat slit right there. So he so he goes and meets with them. He says, you know, congratulations on your escape, uh, general. And as they get on the as they're gonna get on the on the plane, and McLean tells um Lorenzo that says like you know uh, um well the grand team's gonna kill that son of a bitch, and he's like no they're not gonna do it. they're gonna get on the same goddamn plane with them and get off take off with them. And he was gonna he was gonna arrest uh, McLean. He goes and push them and goes and shoots them with the with the blanks that he has and explains the whole thing. Well these are the bulls they use out there tonight. Blanks. So now he sees knife and now he believes him now. And now back with them on the plane, William Atherton, he's of course he doesn't mind he's he's just too nosy and can't mind his own business. He he he, he, he overheard a transmission with the with the tower and he got he's on a call with the news station and explains everything to the whole, to the whole, um, everyone hears at the airport about this because of his dumbass and stupidity. He causes a whole panic in the airport. <laughs> Which Fred Dalton Thompson says, you know, that stupid, arrogant son of a bitch. Which he is, because he was, he, he, he was being stupid. And an asshole for that, you know. He caused a whole panic at the airport. And which he deserves when, um, uh, Holly tasers him. He's like, amen to that, dick. He deserved, he did, he just, he deserved that. Um, and then, um, um, uh, McLean, he gets, and he, as he gets in the helicopter with a reporter, he sees him taking off, he jumps on the wing, and, um, takes, uses a, his, uh, jack, his jacket to block the thing before, so on the one that's part of the wing, so he can't take off. So he gets in a fight with John Amos, you know, fist fight, and he's like, too bad, McLean. I kind of liked you. And McLean goes, I got enough friends, and he kicks them over to the, um, the, to the, over to the, over to the engine, the, the plane propellers, the, with the engine, I'm, I'm calling it engine. So he, he's in there, he tries to hold line, he gets sucked in, gets torn, he gets shredded up. And then William Sadler, he comes in with a knife, He's getting, he's getting to John McClane. And see, he, he's, getting, he's screaming and he's being stabbed in. And then when also what McClane does, as he's being stabbed, he goes and takes a bite out of William Sadler's hand. He's like, oh, die! He goes and takes a chunk out of his hand out and spits it out. <laughs> so, that was, that was a, a badass movie. Even though he's getting stabbed, he does something else. He goes and takes a bite out of his hand. Um, but he's getting, he's getting beat because the guy is using his martial arts and he kicks him on the plane as he pulls up that uh, fuel lever. And there is, they're about to lift off, and of course he lights his, uh, his lighter and says, Yippee motherfucker, and lights it. Explodes, and really really good explosion of the plane. You can tell it's a, it's a model plane exploding. Really well done effect. Really good explosion. Just boom, really good model effect of the plane explosion. And so that creates a light for all the planes to land safely. And McLean, he's happy to see his wife, and um, um, and Holly's like, "Why does this keep happening to us?" And then this old lady that um, Holly was um, talking to her the whole time on the plane, and he sees William Atherton on the ground. And he's like, "Please help me!" And she goes like, "Asshole!" 
which he which he was because he just, he caused a whole panic on the plane and on the airport. So, and then Mark comes in to give him give him a ride, and um, Dennis Franz, Lorenzo is like, "Hey, McLean, did you get this parking ticket in front of my airport?" Yeah. Ah, oh, what the hell? It's Christmas, and he had that same song playing. Those at the end, um, you know, let it snow, let it snow. What that play at the end of the first film plays in here again. So yeah, Die Hard two. I, I love this film. It's my definitely my, my favorite sequel. Um, but I love Die Hard with a Vengeance. Like I said, the reason why I like this more because I've seen this more times than Die Hard with a Vengeance growing up. So that's why. Fun, fun sequel, well directed by Rennie Harlan. I enjoy really Rennie Harlan. He's a great director. Yeah, even though he has some misfires with some other films, but still, like I said, this film, Deep Blue Sea, Adventures of Fort Fairling, um, Cliff Cliffhanger. I also forgot. I, I, I even like Mind Hunters with LL Cool J, Val Kilmer, and Christian Slater. I even I didn't mind that film at all either. I forgot he directed that film. Forgot to mention that. Darn. But yeah, this is a fantastic, great sequel. It's a, I would put this as a classic, a classic sequel as well. One of the best of the blockbusters. Well, at the time, one of the best blockbusters, I would say. And also the whole thing that um, the terrorist thing at taking war with, um, at the airport, which occurs to me now, is that um, this was, the idea of terror, terrorists at airports would never happen nowadays because all the crap that's happened over the years with terrorists and the whole security things, the airports and all that. That would never, a film like this would never happen like this nowadays. But I'm glad about, about the time it did. Now I can look back and say, yeah. But, um, I, I love this film. It's a great, it's a, I think it's a great sequel. I love, I enjoy the action sequences from the, like I said, the, the, the shootout at that terminal, Robert Patrick and all the other shootouts at the, at the beginning right there. I love that shootout. It's my favorite shootout of the film. And uh, McLean, the ejector seat of the plane exploding. <laughs> love, love that explosion. He's going up. He's like, oh shit. I love that scene right there. And the whole the fight scene with him, him and um, John Amos and um, William Sadler. Great explosion of, the, of that plane exploding. Also, good line, um, well known lines from John McClane. Bruce Willis, once again, fantastic as John McClane, I would say. Uh, Bobby Bedelia was good, even though he you know, more, was more on the plane, though, but still. Um, we have a team, he was, a, once again, great douchebag. Um, William Sadler, he was a great bad guy as well. Same with Johnny Mills. So I, I like that Johnny Mills was like good at pulling the wool out of everybody's eyes until he finds out like, he's a turncoat. And um, Reginald Bell Johnson, nice to see him. He was good for the small role he had in the first film, but still was nice to see him. Um, good score by Mark, by Michael Kamen. Um, well, once again, well direct, um, well directed by Rennie Harlan. Pacing is the pacing. The first one was 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 more fast paced than this one though, but still I think it was decently well paced. I think it, it didn't it didn't drag on that much, but I like I liked um, the pacing of this film it was decent. Um, but yeah, I don't know why I'm going to say it, but Die Hard 2, great sequel, it's my favorite sequel of the series, uh, da -da -da -da. yeah, but yeah, that's, that's my review for Die Hard 2, but yeah. I, I can't explain more, I'm just going to repeat myself, but Die Hard 2, I think, it's a, I say it's a still a great sequel, I love the sequel. But anyway, thanks for watching, and stay tuned on the next movie review of the of Die Hard franchise, and then we're getting to is Die Hard with a Vengeance. Get to that. But yeah, but thanks for watching, and stay tuned on the sequel for the, the review of that film next. Later.